Hi, everyone, and welcome to this chapter of the Free Fall Stack course. In this chapter, we're going to briefly talk about Flutter. So what is Flutter? Flutter is Google's rich and modern UI framework. It's kind of difficult to explain Flutter just by sentences instead of just showing you. So that's why I've chosen to show you some code as well in this chapter. We're not going to do any Flutter development per se in this chapter, but I think it's very important that you get, an, get a good understanding of what Flutter is before we actually commit to it. Because we're going to develop the backend in this entire course with Django, which uses Python. But when it comes to the mobile applications, we're going to use a Flutter uh, to create the iOS and the Android apps. Now, what we're going to do in this um, in this course, not particularly in this chapter, is to install Flutter also and all the required dependencies for Flutter on all the three platforms that this course supports, Windows and Linux and Mac OS. For Mac OS, we're going to use the latest version of Mac OS, whichever is available at the moment. For Windows, I'm going to go with Windows 11. And for Linux, we're going to go with Ubuntu. So what does Flutter code actually look like? Flutter code is very declarative. So if you're familiar with, with for instance, Swift UI, you'll know that uh, Flutter code is also very similar in that you kind of define your user interface and the logic behind your user interface in a very expressive and a declarative way in that, for instance, if you have a screen on the mobile device that you're trying to create with a button inside it, first you create your screen and then you can physically see inside the view uh, that you've created, then you can create a button. So they're indented in a way that it literally shows you that they, they are kind of combined into each other. In many other uh, frameworks, such as UI kit, for instance, if you're trying to create a view with a button in it, you can't always directly see the relation between the button and the view that hosts the button. But Flutter and Swift UI, in that sense, they're very declarative and they're very verbose. So you, anyone actually looking at the code can quite easily see the relation between objects. So let me just show you quickly what Flutter code looks like. React Native, when we when we create applications with React Native, we're using JavaScript as the programming language behind it. We're, for Flutter, we're using Dart, which is a programming language maintained, created by, and maintained by Google. And remember, Flutter also is uh, the rich framework that is created by Google. So Google is behind both Flut Flutter, which is the framework, and Dart, which is the programming language that uses that the framework uses to create these rich applications. So this is a simple application created in Flutter and the programming language here is Dart. So you could see that this is very similar to JavaScript in, in some sense. So you have some, for instance, here is an array. Uh, here we have a class and you can see we're extending another class or so we're subclassing another class. We have a constant constructor in here. So this is a constructor. Here's another function. So in Flutter, you have the um, you have the these stateless widgets. So pretty much everything that you see on the screen is a widget, and um, and I don't mean widgets as you'd have like widgets on your uh, mobile phone, for instance. But they're kind of comparable as well. However, in Flutter, almost everything is a widget. Even like gesture detectors are kind of widgets. So you can see in here the normal, for instance, creation of a grid view here in Flutter. So you see a grid view builder. So this is a kind of like a constructor for your grid view. And then you pass properties to this grid view. And then you have these builder functions in here. As you can see, your functions start with curly brackets. So this is unlike Python, for instance, which we're going to use for our backend. And to be honest with you, the goal of what I'm trying to achieve right now is not that you understand this code. It's just you get a feeling of what Flutter code looks like. So understanding the Flutter code is going to come at a much later stage when we actually start doing the development of our uh, front end with Flutter. So you you probably uh, you're wondering why we've chosen Flutter for this course. Well. With Flutter, you can write the code once, and you can deploy it pretty much on almost six platforms. So we're not going to go with all these six platforms. We're just going to use iOS and Android for this course. So we're going to create like our mobile applications with Flutter. 
but Flutter's uh, ability to create many applications using the same source code, basically, it is going to allow us to save so much time. Uh, and it's going to make it a lot easier for us to create the client code instead of us having to do it natively with Android and then natively with iOS, which would take a lot of time on their own. So in order to save time and in order to create the same application with the same source code on both platforms, iOS and Android, that's why we've chosen Flutter for this course. So as I mentioned previously, Flutter uses Dart as its programming language. Dart is maintained and created by Google. And very similar to JavaScript, it's not that difficult to go to Dart, for instance, from Swift or Rust also. Uh, so if you're familiar with any of these programming languages, you're not going to have any problems starting pro to program in Flutter and Dart. So what do we need in order to get started with Flutter? We actually have to install Flutter itself as a framework, which is open source and free to download. And I'm going to walk you through the installation process of Flutter in coming chapters. But Flutter also is dependent on a few things, on a few uh, frameworks itself. So for instance, on iOS, if you want to do, um, sorry, on Mac OS, if you want to do iOS development and Android development with Flutter, you actually have to install Xcode to get the iOS SDK. And you also have to install Android SDK in order to, uh, and, and Android Studio, for instance, in order to be able to do Android development with Flutter. So in the coming chapters, we're going to go through the installation of some of these components. For instance, right after this chapter, we're probably going to start installing Android SDK with Android Studio. So on these three platforms that I mentioned previously, Mac OS, Linux, and Windows. So we need a few things in order to get started with Flutter development and um, you don't have to worry about that because I'll walk you through all the installation processes. For the editor for uh, Flutter development, we're going to use Visual Studio Code. And the reason that we're using Visual Studio Code, one of the most important reasons for this particular course is actually that we can use Visual Studio Code for the development of our backend with Django. We can use Visual Studio Code for the development of our front end for iOS and Android using Flutter. And we can use Visual Studio Code also to do the command line application much later in this course in Rust. So it is a very versatile code editor and which we can use for all these three technologies in this stack that we've chosen for this course. So it's very flexible and I'll uh, help you set it up uh, in this course. So you don't have to worry about that. We didn't talk really about the installation process of Flutter or anything like that in this chapter. As I mentioned at the beginning of this chapter, this was just an introduction to Flutter. So we will go through the installation process of Flutter in the coming chapters. So uh, I think that's pretty much it for this chapter. And I'll see you in the next one.